Good day, ladies and gentlemen. It is Sasquatch Sunday, and I am Todd Standing, the man who takes people into the field and has them either live interact with or eyewitness a Sasquatch. Today, I'm going to talk about a topic that's very exciting. So, the U.S. military has, I have a, a, a story to tell you about an event that allegedly transpired, and I strongly believe it did transpire. Last year, a colonel who uh, was retired and spent uh, his, his whole life uh, working for the U.S. military, he was trained at West Point, amazing human being, just passed away last year. He's the gentleman that actually gave me, you'll notice in my documentary, the Bigfoot hand grab scene, and a couple other scenes in there were filmed with Generation 4 night vision. It was military. I've had that for 15 years. <laughs> well, until it got stolen by an expeditioner a couple years ago, someone realized how valuable it was because in public, they only have Generation 3. So for many, many, over a decade, I've had the help and assistance of several military officers. And uh, this gentleman taught, taught me something that was very, very significant. So besides the fact that he helped with Border Patrol Canada, US, and uh, ran a crew of Apache helicopters, um, he taught me this incredible, amazing event that had happened when he was in his younger days. I don't know the year. I don't remember him ever telling me the year, but this is really, really important, guys. This is strategic military advancements and the importance of the discovery of Sasquatch on so many levels. So what he alleged happens was, again, in his younger years, uh, someone found a Sasquatch, a female Sasquatch, who was dying, hypothermic, nearly dead, in a creek. Apparently what had happened was she'd eaten a fish that had a fish hook in it. And over a, a, a length of time, the hook got caught in her intestinal tracts and nearly killed her. So they found her, hypothermic, nearly dead, unconscious, took her to a military installation where he was working and the surgery was very simple. Saving her life was very simple because her anatomy was pretty much identical to human beings. They called in some surgeons, did this procedure, and now they, had, they have themselves a fully grown adult female Sasquatch in this compound. But what happened after that is what's absolutely amazing and astonishing. So at that time, telepathy and mind speak were woo-woo stuff. And if it's woo-woo to you today, you are way behind the times and I have no sympathy for your ignorance. So university has been teaching this for a decade. Telepathy is absolutely real. Psychologists are working with impasse. This is an absolute reality. So get over yourself. You're the one that's falling behind, not me. So what happened was, what they found in a big hurry was when they would feed her, the person who had no knowledge of her, this is a, this is a cement military compound. Serious, like, kind of, you know, hush-hush, secret military compound base. Serious cement building. She was in a, in, a, in a very exclusive area. Limited access personnel. So the person that was making her food that had no idea she was making food for a Sasquatch, they noticed there's a, there's a uh, Pavlo's effect where a dog will salivate, ring a bell, give him food, he salivates, ring a bell, give him food, he salivates. They noticed that when this person would be making her food, good food that she would enjoy, she would salivate. And go, mm. She knew the food was coming. Well, how can that be? This person's making food for her at the other side of the military compound because she could see it. She was telepathic. They saw other things that she was doing as well in the building, but nothing more important than that. And they substantiated this incredible uh, ability that she had by giving that person, making her, that person make really crappy food for her. So he made some nasty thing with Magus and the Sasquatch. But, ugh, ye, ugh. So... Further experiments were obviously done, but that was in the beginning of his career, uh, soon after he graduated from West Point. So there wasn't much more that he got to learn about it other than with border. Uh, they had that knowledge of Sasquatch along the border that I've talked about in other videos. So how do I identify a Sasquatch? But since he was trained at West Point, thoroughly educated, a, a career military man, he's told me something that absolutely blew my socks off. And I've, I've never talked about this publicly. So... The Sasquatch having this ability is more, it's horrifically advantageous. In fact, he believes that the men with goats experiments and remote viewing and all that stuff <clears throat> was later on developed because of that experience with this particular Sasquatch. There's no doubt this being was immensely telepathic. And this is tremendously advantageous. Remote viewing of things... Uh, like if you haven't seen Third Eye Spies, you got to give that show a watch. These are absolute facts. 
that high-end military in Russia and the United States for sure have been using for decades and decades. They're very advanced with it. So, but anyways, <laughs> what he told me was in World War II, bats were responsible for radar that was highly advanced technology. And uh, all, most of the military installations discovered this technology at the same time, but it was bats that really facilitated this discovery process and their abilities. He told me that the, the, any, mili any major military establishment has the number one priority to keep its people safe and protect them. And he said any military establishment that would discover something like radar, <clears throat> if they had the ability to, they would annihilate the bats, remove them from any other military ability to get that technology because it saves human lives. Screw the animals. So with him saying that, knowing that if the U.S. government, for example, or Russia or Germany or whoever, discovered radar from bats, they would annihilate bats anywhere else to keep that technology for themselves, even wipe out the species entirely to keep that technology safe. And he told me that the ability, just the telepathic ability of Sasquatch alone would have, would be something that would, they would keep extremely quiet, but it would be so immensely advantageous that they would do everything they could to keep that to themselves, keep it a secret. I mean, it would literally fall into what he called, you know, a major security risk for protecting the people of the United States as an example. So a really amazing man. Uh, I'm... I'm definitely going to miss him uh, now that he passed away in 2023. I don't think I'll uh, I have no need to release his name. Uh, this story and this, all the things, all the advice that he gave me over the years really just resonated with me. And uh, I mean, if you're, if you're in a position, I mean, you know about the Washington State Atlas for Engineers, how that was released that there's, they had Sasquatch identified in it. This is way back in what, the 70s at least, maybe 80s, I'm not sure. But uh, if you think, for, the, for those of us in the know that Sasquatch absolutely exists, you know, even those who are, you know, significantly uh, convinced by the breadth of evidence, the immense breadth of evidence that exists out there, we have to think how the military establishments are keeping this a secret, hiding this from us, you know, like they, like they do with so many things. I mean, even <laughs> speaking of, you know, something specifically like, my generation four military night vision, I literally, they, they gave it to me approximately 15 years ago. And this technology isn't available to the public today. And the re, you know why they gave it to me 15 years ago? Because it's a stinking, reeking piece of crap. It was something they kick around the ground. It's useless garbage. They were on like generation nine at the time. So generation four for him to give it to me, I mean, I'm talking spectacular technology. So the things that... The, that the U.S. government specifically, I mean, you can, you can argue that point. But it's really about national security and keeping the people safe. That's something he talked a lot about. And you got to respect that because that's the, that's the point of the president and the military is to take care of the people, even though we don't feel very well taken care of. But I think now it's, it's a matter of not so much because when you talk about they did not annihilate the Yeti, the Yaren, the Yowie in Australia, there's still sightings and they still exist. So knowing that they didn't annihilate the species to keep it quiet, or maybe they couldn't, or maybe even Sasquatch is responsible, again, for this knowledge, this technology, this, these advancements. This is, and this is not something I can't even imagine there being a machine ever that can do this. I don't care how advanced AI gets. How could you ever duplicate telepathy and mind speak and remote viewing? These things are absolutely real and proven, guys. Watch Third Eye Spies. We're talking about Princeton and Harvard, major universities all over the world. Know that telepathy is real. That remote viewing is absolutely a reality. And to think that, that, that those advancements likely came from the discovery of Sasquatch. So, however, today, as I said, I don't believe it's the military that's holding back on this technology at all. I'd be firmly convinced, in fact, that it's about following the money, like Survivor Man taught me. Because if you recognize an indigenous, sentient species, which is what we're talking about with Sasquatch, that lives out here in these wildernesses, a people that have rights, like they didn't, they didn't log in California because of the spotted owl, which I respect and appreciate because now we have some old growth forests. What do you do when you find out that out there in the wilderness, 
there's a there's 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 an indigenous species of sentient hominids. What kind of rights are they going to have? So you follow the money. Trees, trees are money. Natural gas is money. Mining of all kinds is money. And they would have to cease and desist so much. And if you look at, even just as an example, in the United States of America, the, uh, the top contributors to the Democratic and Republican Party are oil and, you know, natural resources. And all that stuff would be tremendously affected by the discovery of Sasquatch. And I even think, from what I've experienced in the area Nordag, there are people, just, just as another example, that uh, in, in the area of Nordag, where about $400 million dollars annually of all kinds of minerals and natural resources come out of that area they stopped that for four years because someone said that the grizzly bear population was having difficulty and all the people know this people that had trucks and lost their jobs and couldn't support their families like these are these are real things that, that matter to everybody they should matter real economics and now that all these people know this and nordeg is so famous for sasquatch the people that live there and work there don't want this discovery to come out because they don't want to lose their industry. And, and what I'm saying is we've got to find a balance where people don't lose their jobs. Sasquatch are out there and we have been doing these things and we do rely on natural resources for our economies. And I don't want to destroy what people are working for. I don't want to destroy people's jobs. But there's a balance that we need to come to because they do exist. They are out there. We need to recognize this reality. And the government of the United States absolutely knows about it. The U.S. military absolutely knows about it. And I guarantee you, you know, we put, we put focus on the U.S. I'm Canadian. I'm in Canada right now. And I don't know where uh, you sit down with people in the know about politics. I don't know who's more corrupt, Canada or the United States. Right now, I think we're in a more communist area that we need to come out of. So, But uh, when it comes to this discovery process, when it comes to Sasquatch, and Bigfoot or wherever you want to call them, Oma. Um, it's a North American thing and it does go into Russia and in Australia. For sure there are Yahweh's. But uh, a goal, certainly in my lifetime, once this, this discovery process has been completely facilitated, which is right here, guys, we're right on the cusp. We've got a whole nother year of expeditions coming up. Very exciting time. The discovery is going to happen. We are right at a cusp. And now the question we need to ask ourselves is what's the next level where we go from here? So. Thank you very much for tuning in my videos. I'm live this Wednesday. I missed my live show last week because I just came back from the beautiful Olympic Peninsula, uh, Nia Bay. Absolutely had a magnificent time there with my expeditioners. We were guided by Macaw Elder natives and just embraced by the reserve there, Nia Bay. Wonderful, incredible people. A shout out to all you amazing people in Nia Bay. We had a wonderful, incredible time. Tremendous success. Check the YouTube channel out for that. So, so much more to come, guys. Stay tuned. Lots of content. And uh, we're making this discovery happen. So... Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye for now.